After using this monitor for a couple of weeks, all of us here at the office simply learned that we are getting older and our eyes aren't what they used to be. We capped out at 240Hz and we clearly can't see what difference ULMB2 makes at all. We are kind of sad now that we know that fact. But if you're someone who's on the other side of the spectrum, well, perhaps you can consider this. The ASUS ROG PG27AQN, a 27-inch IPS monitor with a 1440p resolution and placing fast 360Hz refresh rate. And of course, the kicker here is that this fully supports G-Sync Ultra Low Motion Blur 2. Hopefully, that's going to be a huge benefit for you, but unfortunately, not for us. So, this monitor is special in the sense that it is currently one of the few monitors that actually supports NVIDIA's brand new G-Sync URMB2 which stands for Ultra Low Motion Blur and 2 being the second generation of the tech. But you now might be wondering, what does that even mean? Isn't motion blur something that game developers implement to which you should already turn that darn thing off in the first place? Well, in actuality, there still is a form of motion blur, and we're talking about an actual physical form of it that our eyes actually perceive, more so than the kind that's artificially introduced in games by developers. So, to give a brief explanation on how the original ULMB2 works, it utilizes a technique called backlight strobing. But to achieve it, ULMB essentially disables the backlight 75% of the time. This meant that the resulting image would be clearer but significantly less bright. On top of that, because older monitors had slower response time, ULMB actually reduces the refresh rate to give more time for the pixels to fully transition gray to gray. So in fact, the resulting image is clearer in motion, but it's significantly less bright and the refresh rate is lowered as well. Not ideal. So with your MB2, NVIDIA basically solved all that, half of which is simply thanks to the progression of technology. Your MB2 now provides backlight strobing at a full refresh rate of the monitor and only reduces the max brightness a slight bit while maintaining clear image quality throughout. So, NVIDIA has a full article about your MB2 and how it all works, so if you're interested, definitely do check it out and perhaps learn a thing or two. But for us here and now, well, the big question remains. Does your MB2 actually work? And how much of an advantage can one actually perceive? Now, huge disclaimer. We do not have the necessary equipment or apparatus to really dive deep down and properly review a monitor's capabilities especially down to the technical detail. If you're looking for such information, we highly recommend searching the other channels out there who can provide you that kind of information. For us here, everything we say is going to be based on my own experience, as well as my fellow colleagues, so ultimately, it's just our opinion and our opinion alone. With that out of the way, we are going to be extremely honest. We seriously can't tell the difference, and we've played quite a number of hours across many different titles such as Valorant, Apex, CSGO, Modern Warfare 2, and even Cyberpunk 2077 for the heck of it. We simply can't tell when we were fully focused on the game and just experience everything as a whole. This monitor, the ROG PG27AQN, is already plenty capable. We are talking 1440p resolution, a really fast IPS panel, 360Hz display HDR600, all that jazz. So, it already performs amazingly well, and to add on your MB2 on top of that is the icing on the cake. But at this level, it feels a little like diminishing returns. We were constantly swapping back and forth with standard 360Hz and G-Sync turned off against 360Hz with your MB2 enabled. To us, it really didn't feel any different. We could still track our targets and enemies just as well, with or without and the motion clarity of the image was just downright equally good. We were fragging our enemies left and right in either mode. So, does that mean that your MB2 isn't really that big a deal? Not necessarily. If you do actually pixel peep and look for the difference, we dare say you can actually see the difference, especially when it comes to text or ages in game. In particular, we could kind of track and read text as it moves from position to position just a tad bit better with your MB2 turned on. And that was enough to let us know that the feature is indeed working. 
Although to be fair, you can actually test to see whether it actually works via a camera. Because of shutter speeds and how a camera actually records an image, you can actually, well, kind of confirm for yourself that your MB2 is indeed turned on. Anyways, technically, that same advantage translates to the entire display and should give us that well-needed advantage of enhanced clarity in motion. In NVIDIA's own words, they claim that gamers can now get an effective motion clarity of over a thousand hertz. With the formula that they invented, 360Hz with URMB2 will give an effective motion clarity of 1440Hz, which is pretty insane, like simply insane. So overall, is the ROG PG27 AQN worth considering? Well, it very much depends on you and where you are in our opinion. In the US, we would say it's a tough choice simply because of the price. The PG27 AQN here retails for about 1050 US dollars or the PG27 AQDM, which uses an OLED panel, retails for just under $1,000. If you prefer a much better image quality and play games that aren't competitive in nature, such as Cyberpunk 2077, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Honkai Star Rail, you name it, the OLED is probably what you want. But if you really want the best of the best, to have that advantage over your enemies in games like Valorant, Apex, CSGO, and more, well, the IPS will provide you that. Here in Singapore, where we are based, the PG27 AQN retails for a whopping nearly 1,900 Singapore dollars, while the PG27 AQDM retails for just under 1,500 Singapore dollars, which is far less. If you're here in Singapore, just go for the OLED. It looks much better, and 240Hz is still nothing to scoff at. Additionally, OLED does also boast a much better response time of just 0.03 milliseconds, which drastically reduces the difference between having URMB2 and not. For us who can't see the difference 90% of the time, it's pretty much a no-brainer. We'll pick the OLED. But at the end of the day, however, your MB2 is still a fantastic technology, and we're certain that pro-level players can perhaps see the difference much more than we can and be able to appreciate the monitor that much more. For us, however, we have simply learned that we are getting older and our eyes just aren't as good. It's sad, but the truth. Anyways, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below and we'll take a look and answer them. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to us for more of such content and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya!